Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah. When people make accusations, usually I don't even respond because let the, let the, let the dogs bark. Yani. And my friends don't need it. My friends, the people of Iman, the people of Tawheed, they know what I'm upon. They know me, they know my videos, they know my durus, they know I'm upon the truth. They know I'm upon the Quran and the Sunnah and the way of the Salaf of the Ummah. So they don't need me to make a clarification. And my enemies don't deserve it. My enemies don't deserve my time. But sometimes people make such a malicious, deceptive lie that you're like, oh, come on, right? Like, let me just make this clear. We had uh, three guys came out to try to debate. And, and in the debates, it's online. You can see the video. You can see how they couldn't even defend their creed. They couldn't even explain their creed. They came out and even their own followers were telling them they got destroyed. So now they came a second, a third. A fourth one of them came back four times now and every time he cannot even defend his own creed that's how pathetic their belief system is they can't even explain their own creed so what do you do next the same thing the enemies of Moses did with him the same thing the enemies of Jesus did with him the same thing with the enemies of the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessings be upon all of them did with them now it's time to make accusations it's time to get the authorities to try to stop you right like with the pharaoh and moses like the rabbis of the temple with jesus and the romans like the Quraysh did with rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam they tried to call the authorities they tried to call the authorities they tried to call the fbi we have a video on it and that didn't work and then they made videos saying yes we should have done it so it's not like they were even denying it right so that didn't work what are you going to do next cancel culture that didn't work permit problem that didn't work then one of the times that David is there, they tried to put a threatening letter. And, and we came to the park, we saw them. One of them, we even have an audio recording of him earlier that day saying that he would put letters on people's houses and things. We have an audio of that, right? But what happened is when the letter was found in front of David, we showed it to him. But then later they were like, no, 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 no it's false because they knew it didn't work. Right? So now what do you do? Now it's time for the lies. Now it's time for the deception, the cutting and pasting. The fourth time David came out, he brought up this tweet. It wasn't even my tweet, somebody else tweeted. And somebody from my account responded. And this person who responded, our brother Abu Abdurrahman, he's one of the brothers that tried to help out with Twitter. Other brothers, when, when the messages became too much, when the comments became too much, when I couldn't keep up, brothers started responding on the One Message Foundation, on the Majdribad channel. Some of the brothers even made the, the Mufti Uthman channel, which I didn't even approve the name of. They post videos on that channel that I don't even know. I don't Until I see the notification, I don't even know, right? So brothers started to respond on those channels and things uh, on my behalf because I couldn't handle the load. So one of the brothers who stepped up, may Allah reward him, and you can contact him. If you contact the Twitter, he will respond to you and tell you. He responded to a tweet emotionally. I didn't agree with the response, so I told him and immediately deleted it, right? And the point of that tweet was that if you want to know what I think, watch my videos. Now, that brother, he also liked some tweets, which I didn't agree with him liking. And, and then he made it, after that, he made a clarification. Before David came to San Diego, before any of this, he posted a clarification saying that, that this is me responding on behalf of Sheikh Uthman's channel, but it's not, or his Twitter, but it's not him. Now, this was pinned to my Twitter before David even came out for that fourth with it. So it was already there. If you go to the Twitter, in the bio, you will find it. The pinned tweet, you will find it. Now, when they brought it up to my face, I explained it. The issue of jizya, the issue of what happened, I explained it. And this is what David said. So, now, when you talk about jizya, if you're looking at it just from the perspective of one ayah, one hadith, this is, this is where you misunderstand the full concept, right? But when you look at it, from the full context of how it's implemented, right? In an implementation, if you are non-Muslim, living in a Muslim land, enjoying the services provided to you by the Islamic government, right? In response for those services, you pay into the system, right? Me as a Muslim, I pay zakat, you pay jizya. Do you see any problem with that? No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you don't. So, no problem with jizya. He's all good with it. <laughs> to my face, when I explain it, he's perfectly fine. 
But when he goes back and they realize that they lost the fourth time and they couldn't get any credo matters, they couldn't get aqidah going, they couldn't get anything against the Quran, all their false ahadith and their misquotations became apparent. Their lies became apparent. Now they're going to go and find an old live stream and cut and clip, cut and clip. That live stream, somebody had brought the issue up. I never said that I tweeted it. I explained the response and then I explained generally that when comments are there and people look at the chain and they cut and paste, they try to take comments out of context. But these guys cut and clipped it. I'm going to play the clip here. If I'm not wrong. Alexander Timothy, that's a very uh, profound sounding name. Hello. 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 I wanted, I wanted to ask Uthman something. Oh, hey. Hey, you Muslim. How are you doing? So I saw Uthman's comment regarding the jizya on Twitter with this guy and you mentioned that the people if they do he asked you a question if the people do not mm -hmm. pay the jizya they should be en uh, enslaved mm -hmm. and you and you replied you teach these sort of stuff in your lessons so i wanted that's to not ask, a, that, that's not a correct so summary but let me let me explain what happened um, it is some troll, and I should have just is he Muslim though? Is he yeah. Muslim? Sorry, yes, man. Are you Muslim, Alexander? Yes, I am a yeah. Muslim, so I want to clarify and not lie. Good man. Islam. Good man. Thanks, uh, for Alexander. Listening. No, just bring it back on. Just bring it back on. Oh, come on. Do we need to keep explaining it? Yeah, I look, to I, ask, look, are you the guy brother, from Twitter? Yeah. Are you the guy from Twitter? Yes or no? Because I know the account. I know, are you... I know the brother. He is, I know the brother. He is my. Uh, you can yes. take him off. You can take him off. All right. uh, we, don't, we don't engage with Muslims on this particular yeah. stream. But, but maybe uh, Sheikh Uthman wants to clarify. I, I will make a clarification. So, so yeah, what happened is some dude on Twitter, some troll, I don't know who he is, um, but made a bunch of comments saying that I don't believe in Jihad Talab and I've denied that there is Jihad Talab and this kind of things. And what I said is that I have clarified these views and what I believe in the Durus. People have misconstrued that by cutting off the top part of the commentary to say that I believe in, in, in things that w wouldn't be necessarily what I do believe in. What I believe in is clear. I believe in the Quran and Hadith and Bab al-Jihad, including Jihad al-Difa, which is defensive Jihad, and Jihad al-Talab, and how the rules and regulations of those work. We have the rules, and we're going to have in Zad al-Mustakni'a, and which is what I said in those in the part of the comments that people cut off as well, that if you want to know the details of how that works, Watch the lessons, they're online, everybody can watch them, and you will understand. You see, now you notice, I never said I tweeted it. I never said that this was something that I sent out. Rather, I explain how people try to misuse the comments. And in that video, and in the comment, and repeatedly I tell people, look, if you want to know what I think, ask me. Muslims, non-Muslims, anywhere, record it. If you want to know what I think, I've got videos that were posted years ago. Look in the description, look at this video that I posted about Jizya. Here's a clip. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. A lot of people trying to promote prejudice and hatred, Islamophobia today have been bringing up this issue of Jizya. They call it a non-Muslim tax, which is factually incorrect. Let me explain. Every government, it needs funds to provide services to its citizens. For example, in the United States or in Europe, you get taxed. You look at your income, you get taxed 30%, 60%, depending where you live. You get tax on sales, you go buy something from the store, 7%, 8%, 9%, you get taxed right away. And those taxes are taken to run the government. Now, in the Islamic form of governance, there are no taxes. That's not the way it works. So how will a government ruling by Islamic law provide those services as security, military, policing, um, welfare to its citizens? For the Muslims living there, they have to pay into that system through what's called zakat. Zakat is a pillar from the five pillars of Islam. Every Muslim has a religious obligation to pay that towards the poor, the needy, the welfare that's going to be used by the state to help the needy, the less fortunate amongst the citizens. Muslims and non-Muslims benefit from zakat. From the categories that can receive zakat are those that are not Muslim. So, now, this, this is going to go on as a method to run the government, but also a ritual that is a worship, that is a part of the religious ceremonies of Islam. Now, what about non-Muslims living in that government run by Islamic law that are going to be enjoying those benefits? Should they be obligated to pay zakat? Well, 
Islam tells you that you have the right to practice your own religion. And that means an Islamic obligation such as zakat is not going to be forced upon non-Muslims living under the Islamic government. What about defending the Muslim land? This is the responsibility of every Muslim. They have to defend the Muslim land. For example, in Israel, you have the IDF. They have a draft. Every Jewish Israeli has to sign up. But if you're a Palestinian, Arab, Christian, or Muslim, you are not asked to sign up. You're not allowed to serve. You have to support the Zionist state in other ways. So those people in the IDF, they have to serve as a religious obligation. In a Muslim state, you have the same thing. You have Muslims that have to join the army and defend the lands. But a non-Muslim is not going to be forced to do that because this is a religious obligation. And Islam does not force its religious values on others. So if you're going to be allowed to live by your own religion and still use the services being provided by the government, you have to pay into it. It's a very simple thing. If you use the services, you're going to be paid. So it is a service fee. It's not a non-Muslim tax because if it's a non-Muslim tax, then even if you don't use the services, you should have to pay. But that's not the way jizya works. Only when the government that is run by Islamic law provides you services as security, you know, uh, as far as uh, welfare, as far as what today we have roads and hospitals and all these things, then you need to pay into that whether you're a Muslim or not. As a Muslim, you'll pay zakat, you'll give sadaqah, you will have those methods of giving which are religious obligations. As a non-Muslim, you will not be forced to follow Islamic religious practices, but you will pay jizya, which can be less than zakat sometimes. So this is not a non-Muslim tax, it is a service fee. I'll give you one example that should make it clear. In the United States, we have taxes that you have to pay. But if you're a member of a church, like the Catholic Church or the Mormon Church, then you could have a tax-exempt ID. That the government says that these churches are fulfilling an obligation by helping the poor, by providing services that give them a tax-exempt ID. So you as a Catholic, when you give money as a religious worship to your Catholic church, you, you get to not pay taxes on them. You write them off on your taxes. Now an atheist, he, can't, he doesn't want to give money to a Catholic church or a, or a Muslim mosque or anything like this. So the government tells him, sorry, you got to pay taxes because these are services that the government is providing you. So because of that, you have to pay taxes. You don't say, oh, this is an atheist tax. No, you say that's a write-off because those churches, according to the U.S. government, are fulfilling a welfare service of the government. So when you, when you donate to your church, fulfilling as a Mormon 10% of your, of your gross income, fulfilling that religious obligation, you don't have to pay taxes on them. Same way in Islam, when you are fulfilling your obligation by giving zakat and sadaqah and serving in the army and, and, and obeying the, the ruler and doing what needs to be done to provide security and services, then you will not pay above paying zakat already. But as a non-Muslim, you do not have to do those, but then you have to pay a service fee for the services that you are utilizing. And this is why in the authentic narration, Khalid ibn al-Walid, when he was in, in the area that is Syria today, when he could not protect the non-Muslim from the Byzantine, he returned the jizya back to him. If it was a non-Muslim tax, why would he give it back? No, he said, this is for a service. And if we cannot provide that service, we will not collect jizya from you and we'll even give you back whatever we had collected because it's a service fee. And anybody with a logical mind, without prejudice, will know that this is a very fair and just system without any prejudice against anybody. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can send a question to us in the link be below to contact us. Look at the date of that video. Before Twitter, before all the, the live stream, before all of that, I had already made this issue clear. If you want to know what I think, whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim in any gathering, open or it's recorded. My durus to Muslims are recorded. My da'wah to non-Muslims are recorded. They're all posted. Watch them and you will know what I think. Not an issue. But when they cannot, when they cannot, when they see the Twitter's already got a post saying that this wasn't from me, when they cannot, they're going to cut and play, kip and lie. Why? Because they're the liars. Let me show you, live to my face, when he brought up this issue and I clarified it, he accepted it. So, now, when you talk about jizya, mm -hmm. if you're looking at it just from the perspective of one ayah, one hadith, this is, this is where you misunderstand the full concept, right? But when you look at it, from the full context of how it's implemented, right? In an implementation, if you are non-Muslim, living in a Muslim land, enjoying the services provided to you by the Islamic government, right? In response for those services, you pay into the system, right? Me as a Muslim, I pay zakat, you pay jizya. Do you see any problem with that? 
I'm good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you don't. So okay. no problem with Jizya. You saw the clip. But when he lied about me, I caught him and told him to his face. Look at this. When he lied about my own words, I caught him here. On video, you just lied upon me. So let me. I didn't. I told you that hadith about the salam was not in reference to Jizya. That hadith I gave you the full version. When he lied about his own Bible, he made up words into his Bible. I caught him on it. When he took the word from squeezing and grabbing to crushing and destroying. Here, watch the clip. By crushing his testicles. It didn't say crushing, grabbing, but go ahead. You're making up. That's what the... Again, again, uh, it's, it says, okay. see, see, it's again, he's lying in the Bible now. He's making, see, Lena, you are lying, because you go, listen, 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 listen. Everybody that has a Bible at home, no, 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 you're, you're caught today again, David, again. No, 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 no. no. Everybody that has a Bible at home, do you, no, hold on. Deuteronomy. No, not necessarily. Deuteronomy. 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 Hold on. Deuteronomy 25 11. Does it say crushing or seizing? If you're you are lying into your you own Bible. Your Read it. You see, the man lies about his own Bible. Let me show you one clear. When I caught him on fabrications and distortion and corruption in the Bible, he said, no, false. Nothing has been corrupt. Look, check what he said. From the Quran and from what we believe and from what you know in your heart, there are things that have been changed. False. So, false. So but look at this liar. He himself in a debate when he was caught, when he didn't want to drink poison, he said there are fabrications in the Bible. Listen to him. Now, the New Testament uh, also states that true Christians can drink poison, Matthew, Mark chapter 16, and not be harmed. My question is, why don't the vast majority of Christians follow these rules? And if they do, I would like, Mr. Wood, I have a, I have a vial of whiteout, liquid paper, highly toxic, I would like Mr. Wood to swig this bottle of whiteout. If he does not do it, then he does not agree that this is the word of God because he's a Christian and Jesus says, according to the gospel of Mark chapter 16, that he can drink poison and survive. If he does not do it, then he is admitting this is not the word of God. If he does, if he does do it and he survives, I am, I am willing to become a Christian tonight. Did you say a bottle of whiteout? I might do that for you. Uh, as far as the mark, that comes from uh, the end of Mark, which practically every scholar, uh, every Bible scholar in, in the world says was not authentic, um, that this was a later edition. Uh, the end of Mark, which practically every scholar, uh, every Bible scholar in, in the world says was not authentic, um, that this was a later edition. Uh, the end of Mark, which practically every scholar, uh, every Bible scholar in, in the world says was not authentic. Um, that this was a later edition, and so that's not in the early source material as far as our earliest, our earliest records don't have that part about the, uh, about These are the liars. These are the liars, and, and they can't deny it. The only way they try to deny it when they try to clip and cut and clip. Watch the full debate. Watch his face. Watch when I tell him. Allah knows, and the believers know, and the people of Haq know that we are upon the truth. And we have been upon the truth. And every time they came out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it that more people got guided. From the first time they came out to this fourth time, they have not been able to bring up any credo issues. And every time people became Muslim, Alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah, from the first time they came out, we have more than 60 people that became Muslim in San Diego. We have videos of some of them. We have posted them. Watch the video. You'll see shahada after shahada after shahada. Allah is guiding people. We had people who came and said that from that debate, I became Muslim. From that, we have comments. More, We can't even count how many people became Muslim uh, watching the videos. Look at these comments where people say, 10 of my friends became Muslim from watching that debate. I became Muslim from watching that debate. Allah is guiding people through these people's plan. They are planning and Allah is planning and Allah is the best of planners. Every time they lie and use deception and come out, more people. We don't know a single person that left Islam. We don't know of a single person that because of this video or this debate became Christian or left Islam. But we can show you tons of people, videos, testimony who said because of these debates, they became Muslim. Alhamdulillah. By the will of Allah. 
And I ask Allah to keep us upon the truth and to let us be those who spread the truth and let people be guided and let these people continue to come out. And if their intention is sincere, may Allah guide them. And if their intention is not sincere, may Allah use them as guidance for those that are sincere. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.